Okay, my dear students, let us start the class. Uh, I think in the last class, uh, we just started with uh, the definition of a design for manufacturing and assembly. I also discussed uh, major phases of design, as well as uh, we discussed what is the effect of uh, material properties on the design, as well as the manufacturing processes on the design. And also we discussed uh, uh, different uh, yeah, uh, different manufacturing processes and what should be the design considerations for uh, those uh, manufacturing processes, okay? So in today's class, uh, we're going to start with uh, the material selection process, okay? I think uh, the slide is visible on your screen. Is it visible? Right, yeah. So just to start with the material selection process, The one I think I was just stopped in the last class. Yeah. So I think in the last class, I just stopped at this point, the material selection processes or methods. See, this uh, concept is uh, very important from the uh, subject point of view, as well as from the examination point of view. Why? Because uh, almost uh, 30 to 40% of uh, the total cost of a product will uh, depends upon uh, the material cost. Of course, once the material has been selected, once the material has been processed, and uh, of course, it needs to be treated with uh, different different methods to get a final shape. So if you took a look at the simple uh, example, just like a bicycle, right? So this uh, bicycle uh, has got uh, uh, the different materials it is made up with, right? So the selection of a material based upon there are so many parameters and the factors that needs to be taken into the consideration to satisfy or to make this cycle to perform satisfactorily, right? So in that respect, the cost is the most important parameter in uh, any of the design process. So why? Because the total cost, when we say at local cost, which includes material cost or processing cost or manufacturing cost or uh, the overhead cost, like that, there are so many plenty of cost will come into the picture. and. Uh, when we select or when you release the product into a market, so the total cost of the product is the one which will go into be uh, make a very impact over the public or the customers. So because uh, looking at the cost of the product itself, they will go into whether they are going to buy the product or they want to reject the product. So therefore, the cost is the one of the most important uh, parameter which is going to play a vital role of. Uh, the fate of any product in the market. So therefore, so being a design engineer, so you should be in a, a position to make the cost as less as possible. In the sense, it's not to mean that you need to compromise with the quality and other aspects of the product. But so where you can optimize, so where is there any possibility to optimize the cost with respect to the performance? Because cost and performance are the two important uh, the trade-offs that needs to be made in a design of a product. So therefore, so we cannot compromise with the performance and of course we cannot compromise with the cost also. So because if you want to provide a, a better performances of a product, definitely the cost will go into be shoots up. Okay, so but if the cost shoots up, so the product may not be sold in the market because the customers may reject the product because of the cost. We cannot, they cannot able to afford the price or the cost to buy the product. So therefore, plenty of uh, uh, what we call it as uh, the optimization methods or optimization uh, uh, parameters that needs to be taken into consideration while you are selecting a material, especially when you are deciding the cost. Okay, so therefore, 
the cost is one of the primary important and the most important factor in a design of a product so therefore as i told the 30 to 40 percent of the cost of the product will depends upon the cost of the material so what type of material you are going to choose so what is the uh, finishing that you can provide to the material so what kind of paint what you can produce we can make it over the product like that there are plenty of uh, uh, parameters and the things will come into the picture when you start uh, selecting a material <coughs> and what are the different processes that the material needs to be required before it has been uh, made into a product so therefore the material selection process is uh, one of the most important uh, methods and the process in our product design where the primary importance is given for reducing the cost so wherever it is possible wherever it is applicable so where you can minimize the cost so that it can have an impact over the total cost of the product so if you just decrease or if you can get a better performance products or materials at a lowest price because uh, and then definitely it will be very helpful for the total cost so because this material cost will be added to the total cost always to get it right so therefore so the primary importance of a mechanical engineer or a design engineer is to select or to make or to choose the material which can perform better and that can be available at the lowest cost this is what the primary importance of uh, this material selection process right in that respect so we have uh, listed out uh, three important uh, methods of course first two are the most important thing i can say the cost per unit property method second one is the uh, weighted properties method and the limits on properties methods okay so let us discuss uh, one by one how, what is these methods and uh, how we can uh, uh, use these methods so that we can select the material uh, which can perform better in the market right so let us start with that okay yeah the first proper method is what we call it as cost per unit property method so this is uh, uh, one of the simplest method which uh, optimizes the selection of the material in a sense so here basically what we do here it is it is possible to estimate uh, how much amount of material is required will go into the cost in a sense depending upon the unit property in the sense the most important uh, thing what we supposed to discuss what was we supposed to understand here is the tensile strength of a material so this method what it gives you cost per unit property method in the sense in the case of a tensile member the cost of a unit strength c p divided by s where c is the cost where rho is the density and s is the strength of the material so quantity c rho into s will go into be the most important parameter in this case why because the cost of unit strength it is given by can be used for initial screening in the sense so initially when you want to screen it out because you will have a plenty of materials in front of you so having a different different properties so what you supposed to do here is you need to select the proper so you select the materials which can be uh, used or which can be applicable for your purpose and for manufacturing the or product of your own so here the materials there may be a uh, different materials having a different properties might be useful for your product so first you need to segregate that so based upon what the strength you will going to say so stressed upon the strength you will going to segregate that and then they later you will go to check which is out of if say a simple example there are around 100 materials in front of you which is suitable for your uh, product so out of 100 so you will going to choose at least one or one or two that is the only thing what we can use it for your manufacturing or uh, developing a product so how i can take one out of 100 so this will comes the optimization concept or it will comes the what we call it as a trade offs between the strength and the cost 
so the different materials having different properties which are suitable for your product so you need to choose which is the best out of that 100 so on what parameter on what criteria you will go to select the this is the best param this is the best product this is the best material out of all these things so this is where the one factor what we call it as cost per unit strength the cost per unit strength is used for initial screening so initially because 100 are there out of 100 it is very difficult to choose one it's not possible so therefore what we do here is we will go into initially we'll go into screen the components we'll go into screen the materials based upon the cost c rho divided by s so c rho divided by s we'll go into use it here so where the c is cost per cost per uh, we call it as yeah it is uh, basically we have uh, uh, the cost per material per unit mass and rho is the density of the material this is the one what we will go into using so here the upper limit is set for quantity rho but then material satisfying the condition can be identified and used as a possible candidate for more detailed analysis in the next stage of selection in the sense the materials with lower cost per unit strength are preferable over here so materials with lower cost per unit strength so if this this term will be having the lowest value which this is the one which is preferable for you if an upper limit is set for the quantity then the material satisfying this condition can be identified and used as a possible candidate for more detailed analysis in the next stage of selection so that is what he will say so you're going to set the upper upper limit set will be done for the materials and whichever you will go into set or whichever you will go into satisfy this condition and you can identify that and you can use those candidates for more detailed analysis so because it is only the initial screening what we use and based upon that we will go into select the different materials based upon the upper limit and then we will go into uh, use those possible candidates for the detailed analysis okay so this is what uh, we have the cross section the formulas for estimating cost per unit property this is very important for you please uh, you have to make a note of these things the formula for estimating cost per unit property so we have a table over here cross section and loading conditions are given here and correspondingly what is the cost per unit strength formula and cost per unit stiffness so this is the formula for calculating the cost per unit properties cost per unit properties look at here so on the first row or sorry for on the first column so we have a cross section and the loading condition simple example if you look at here a solid cylinder in tension or compression so the condition will be given for you cross section will be given for you so you should be in a position to calculate what is the cost per unit spent using this formula okay and of course cost per unit stiffness can also be used when it's a term stiffness the modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus the value of that uh, will come into the picture so making use of that you can also calculate or you can also segregate the materials based upon the cost per unit stiffness also in a similar way we have a solid cylinder in bending and solid cylinder in torsion solid cylinder bar in slender column solid rectangle in bending and thin wall cylindrical pressure vessel so like that there are so many uh, cross sections they have given and correspondingly the load condition so because different different uh, cross sections under different different load conditions we will have uh, the different formula for calculating the cost per unit strength so this is the table which is very important for you please uh, make a note of these things of course same thing are going to be uh, loaded in the your uh, posted in your google classroom but uh, this is very important so please make a note of this formula so that uh, to be useful for us for calculation or for solving the problem also okay so i want everybody to note it down i will give just two minutes time so make a note of this table and formula for different cross section and loading condition but when we want to solve the problem you should be in a position to know which formula can be used for which condition and which cross section i will give two minutes time for everybody to just make a note of this table quickly 
okay and keep it with you and whenever i need to solve the problem so this formula has to be used okay so time starts now make it fast two minutes otherwise better take a snap of this keep it with you that's anything anything you can do take a picture of this in a photo you can get it and keep it with you that's also possible <laughs> Let us just move on to the next slide here. Yeah, this method is suitable for initial screening in situations where one property stands out as the most critical service requirement. In the sense, so this method is what we have uh, seen, how we can initially screen the material. This method is uh, suitable for the situations only where the one property stands out as the most critical service requirement in the sense see different different uh, materials or different different uh, uh, materials will be subjected for a different different uh, uh, load conditions in the sense the service requirements will be different for different different materials so depending upon uh, what type of product it is what type of functions it do what kind of forces it will be subjected or loads it will be subjected for and how long it will be subjected for. There are plenty of factors that needs to be considered uh, when uh, taken into consideration if the material has been used in a product and it has been uh, put into a service. But when you are selecting a material for the product, so if you know which is the most important property, only one property, you can say only that is a, one of the most important and the critical property that is to be very much important in the case of uh, uh, the material which has been under a service requirements. So that you need to identify and based upon that product or based upon that pro property, so you will go into screen the material. So that's why we will say it is a one property that stands out as the most critical service requirement. In the sense that property is very, 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 very critical for you when that product or made out of this material will be put into an actual service. This is a very important thing you're supposed to know, which is that property you need to identify. And based upon that property, you will go into initially screen the material. Okay. So in this case, it is possible to estimate how much various materials to provide this requirement with cost. In the sense, how much various materials to provide. In the sense, how much amount of, we can say, how much material requirement is how much amount of material is required for you? so because based upon uh, the preliminary screening we can say preliminary screening or initial screening based upon the strength so we can easily possibly estimate how much amount of material is required for the requirement 
So in a sense, how much amount of material is required and what is the cost of that material and what will be the total cost of the material which is required for the purpose. The cost per unit strength and strength is usually one of the most important criteria. So cost per unit tensile strength, so dollars per MPA, we can call it as. So that is the most important uh, uh, criteria which is used for the initial screening. So in this case, materials with the lower cost or unit strength, lower cost per unit strength are always been preferable for us. In a sense, the materials which are having the lower value of the cost per unit strength is always preferred, right? Since manufacturing costs are a significant factor in evaluating a materials, it can be considered the cost per unit property analysis by considering P as the cost of material plus manufacturing and finishing cost. So that's, a, that's what I was talking on the first slide. The cost, when you say a cost, the manufacturing cost will also play a vital role. So in the sense, you need to select a material which can be manufacturable which is having a good manufacturability property. So therefore, so since the manufacturing cost significating the evaluating the properties in the sense material. So when you are selecting a material, you should know which material is easily manufacturable. So if it requires a, a more number of processes or more number of uh, what, what <coughs> <coughs> techniques that needs to be used, then the, definitely the cost will go into be shoots up. So therefore, that material you need to choose, which is easily manufacturable, and that can be considered in the cost per unit property analysis by considering the P as the cost of the material plus manufacturing and finishing cost. So one of the limitations of this method is it considers only one property as the most critical and ignoring other properties. So that's what I was talking about. Uh, the most important thing here is a tensile strength. Apart from tensile strength, there are other mechanical, other properties can also be contributing to the cost of the material. But in this method, we are considering only one property. So that is one of the property which we considered it as the most critical and we are going to ignore the other properties. That is one of the major limitations of this method. Since the comparison of material is a fundamental part of material selection, a basis of material can be selected and other candidate materials compared against it. In the sense, you are going to select the material for the basis material and other candidate materials. So if you say an aluminium, that is a base material. So be, apart from uh, uh, with the aluminium, there are plenty of uh, alloys will be there, uh, uh, composite materials will be there. So we had to select which are those candidate materials and we can compare those these things. And the relative cost per unit property RC is given by. So this is what they say. The RC I is a candidate. This is a formula for calculating the relative cost per unit property. RC relative cost per unit property. PI by PB into sigma B by sigma I into rho I by rho B where I is the candidate material and B is the basis material. I is the candidate and B is the basis material. If RC1 is less than 1, the candidate material is less expensive than the base material. This is what we say the limitations of this method as well as how we can calculate the relative cost per unit property. So of course, when we solve the problem, we'll understand how we will uh, use this unit property method to get uh, the, or to select or how to initially screen the material based upon uh, the cost per unit property ratio, right? This is the first method. Coming on to the second method over here, we call it as a weighted properties method. So basically in this method, each material requirement is assigned a certain weight depending upon its importance. So the first method was cost per unit property method. So in the second method, it is a weighted properties method. So what we do here is, so we will go into list out a certain materials out of those materials, which is the most important. That is a given a 100% weightage and relatively uh, the other weightages will be given for the other materials also. Okay, so like that, so different different materials will be there. You will go into select it, and you will go into give a 
assign a certain weight to those materials depending upon its importance. And a weighted property value is obtained by multiplying the scaled value of the property by weighting factor. Means weighted property value is obtained by multiplying the scaled value of the property by a weighting factor. So in the sense, when you scale down, when, when the scale value of the property is being multiplied by the weighting factor alpha, so you are going to get a weighted property, right? The weighted property values of each materials are then summed to give a performance index. The material with the highest performance index is optimum for the application. So B is called a scaled property. Yeah, scaled property, which is equal to numerical value of the property into 100 divided by maximum value in the list. In a sense, so... Yeah. So here, what we do here is the weighting factor is alpha and a scaled property, scaled value of the property, what we call it as. How do you calculate the scaled value property? It is a ratio of numerical value of the property divided by maximum value in the list into 100. So I told you we'll have a 10 or 15 number of materials will be listed out. So you will be knowing what is the property of those materials, each and every materials you will be knowing. And, sorry. Based upon that, you will go into calculate the scale, scale property. So how the, you will know the, what is the numerical value of the property of the particular material and divided by the what is the maximum value of that property in that particular list. So into 100, that will go into give the scaled property for you. Okay. So performance index and then the scale property and the weighting factor. These three are the important property, important uh, terms for us here. Find the weighting factors of properties of candidate material. Convert the properties of the different materials into scaled properties. And finally, we will go to find out the performance index. That is summation of alpha into beta. So we will be solve the problem. Then you will go to understand how we will go to use uh, the weighted property method for uh, selection of a material. So in the sense here, first you are finding out the weighting factors of the properties based upon the importance and convert the properties of the different materials into scaled properties. That's what I was talking. So the most important material will be given 100%. And later on, you're going to keep on giving the importance for the other materials also. So then we will go into multiply that value with the, uh, of course, uh, uh, we will go to calculate the scaled properties based upon the numerical value of the particular property divided by the maximum value in the list. So then we're going to get the what is the scaled property of that particular material. And afterwards, we're going to start adding all those parameters that is product of alpha into beta to get a summation of that that will constitutes the performance index gamma over here okay this is how we will generally calculate the performance index using the uh, what you call it as weighted properties method so ranking of an attribute attribute are the characteristics that can be described to distinguish one item from the other so attributes, the word very important word here, attribute. Attribute is what? Attributes or characteristics that can be described to distinguish one item from the other. In the sense, attributes is nothing but just uh, the characteristic. Basically, it is a characteristics and which you're going to distinguish. If you're going to describe how the one item will be differs from our other or it will going to be distinguished from the others so such type of characteristics we call it as an attributes attributes are the characteristics that can be described to distinguish one item from another some attributes more important than the other determination of the relative importance of the various properties assigned to these attributes is therefore necessary if this method is to be used in the sense so if you say uh, three or four attributes are there, each attributes will have their own uh, importance. Okay, so therefore, de determining the relative importance of various parameters assigned to these attributes 
or the most therefore it is necessary if this method can be used there are two ways uh, two steps for ranking attributes rank in order of importance with no consideration of how much important one attributes to the in the sense what they say is you have to rank the order of importance without consider without considering how important one attribute is to the other so you might be having four or five attributes each attributes will have their own relationship so here when you are ordering or when you are ranking the order of importance so here there is no need to consider how important one attribute is to the other that is a one important step what you supposed to remember second important thing is a weight is assigned to the importance of each attributes so here we will go into weigh or we will go into provide the weightage to the uh, importance of each attributes so these are the two steps for ranking attributes next comes weighting factors it is this is desirable to quantify the relative importance of attributes one attribute may be very much important than another while others may be quite similar in the sense so here what happens see it is uh, very much desirable to quantify the relative importance of that so you might be having uh, uh, different characteristics of the material where you can uh, distinguish one material from the another that is what we generally call it as an attribute so of course these attributes are very important to quantify their relative importance because it is desirable we say they'll say it is desirable to quantify the relative importance of the attributes one attribute may be very much more important than the another while others may be quite similar importance in the sense if you say a one attributes so when you just uh, comparison or when you are providing a weighting factors so you have to select one important factor or important attributes which are very very much more important than another okay means that way you have to segregate the properties of the materials and uh, while others may be quite similar in the importance also that's what they say the relative importance is shown by using a point scale that does not exceed 100 points of course uh, relative importance we are showing here of course uh, maximum will be the 100 so relative to that you can usually calculate uh, what is uh, the relative importance of uh, each uh, what you call it as uh, parameters right this is a weighting factor so when we solve a problem on uh, weighting factors or weighted properties method you will going to understand how to solve this okay then the third important thing is the limits on properties method so the performance requirements are divided into three categories lower limit properties upper limit properties and target value properties so limits on properties method is basically it is uh, the performance requirements so there you have divided that uh, the performance requirements into three categories one is a lower limit properties upper limit properties and target value properties the limits can be used for eliminating suitable material from a data handbook so if you use the limits definitely that uh, and unsuitable material will be eliminated from the data window. After the elimination stage, the limits on the properties method can be used to optimize the selection from among the many materials in the sense. So when you say uh, limits on properties methods, so based upon the performance requirements, so we will go into uh, divide the components into lower limit, upper limit, and target limit. Am I right? So here, so you can use the limits can be used for eliminating unsuitable material unsuitable material from the data handbook so based upon uh, the uh, what we call it as uh, the experience so you can see which material is totally not required in our data handbook or data book data bank so you can easily eliminate that uh, material is uh, definitely not suitable for any of the purposes here so therefore so you can eliminate those unused to meet unsuitable materials from the data handbook and after the elimination stage limit on properties method can be used to optimize the selection among the 
remaining materials. So once you eliminate, once you eliminate the materials which are not suitable for uh, you to remain in the data handbook, so you can apply the limit properties methods to optimize the selection from among the remaining methods. This is what uh, the limits on properties method will go into C. Okay. So these are the three different methods what I wanted to convey regarding the material selection process here. So if you have any clarification, you can make it. And uh, after this, you need to have one uh, quiz. You have to uh, log into the Google Classroom. I've made a uh, Google Forms. You can attend that uh, Google uh, Classroom quiz. And before that, if you have any clarification, you can have. No doubt, sir. Okay. Mithun? Sir, in waiting, sir. Hmm. The relative or uh, that uh, point scaling, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will explain that. When we solve the problem, you'll understand that. How we can relatively, we will go to do that. So what we do generally, we will go into select uh, which is the best, uh, which is the uh, material which is having the highest value. Based upon that, we will go into calculate the relative importance. That I will go into explain when you solve the problem, you will go into understand clear. No problem. Yeah. Any problems? Any clarifications? Any doubts? Sandesh. Sukrut. No, sir. I will noted out that formula for calculating uh, cost per unit property. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, that is very important for you because uh, uh, we had to use that formula for calculating uh, many things. Yeah. Sir, uh, yeah. The cost per unit property method. Yeah. It is the lower cost per. Uh, Cost per unit strength is preferable. I did yeah. Low no. cost per limit. The cost, the ratio, cost per unit strength, if you have that ratio value is very less. So you, if you say it's a material, one material, it will have certain strength. So you will say this is a required strength for me. And you will be knowing what is the cost of that material. The material cost divided by the strength. If that value is lowest value, that is the most one which is preferable for you. Why? Because you are providing a material at a lowest cost, having the same strength. That ratio we will going to calculate. We will going to do. I will show one. Uh, just a minute. Have that problem now. Just a minute, I will show one problem. Okay, tomorrow's class I will show one problem how you can uh, do this cost per unit property method and how we can use that formula and you can do that. I will show by tomorrow. Then you can understand easily how you can do that. Okay, yeah. Right. Okay, let us move on to the Google Classroom. So I have just made on Google form over there. So you can just... Uh, I think everybody has been uh, logged into that uh, Google Classroom, I feel. So move on to the Google Classroom.
yeah so it is assigned now you can start answering those questions
see everybody has to submit your quiz is still to have submitted Okay, if you submitted this for Google Forms, you can leave. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. 